So what are you doing? Just in case. Stick around, guys. Hey, hey, you two. Welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. I'm Arabin, and hey, I'm glad you're here. It's a little chilly outside. It's 46 degrees, windy, so I decided to bring it from the outdoors to the inn here in my, my fox den. And today, with all this coronavirus stuff going on, I wanted to update some of my gear. And uh, what I've decided to do is take some of the gear that I kind of had in one mixed bag that I call my blackout bag and uh, create contents from that a new bag which is basically like a containment bag or a contagion bag or a pandemic bag whatever you want to call it a bag to help in the event of this pandemic like the coronavirus or whatever the bug of choice may be at whatever time. Now I'm very blessed to live out in the country. I live in a very rural area, low population. We have very few neighbors. So I am not in an urban environment. My wife and I just started binge watching a show on Netflix called uh, Containment and it takes place downtown Atlanta and a nasty virus breaks out and it leads to looting and gangs and government cover-ups all that kind of stuff and it reminded me of what might be going on in China right now gangs taking over robbing and then selling stuff on the black market at a high high price others starving to death if they don't get the virus and die of that uh, anyway another reason why I would never want to live in a big city like Atlanta or New York or anything like that so I think that just the fact that I do live in a rural area, my chances for contagion are better. I can hunker down out here, and if I do have to go out, you know, to a store or what have you, the amount of physical contact with human beings is already somewhat limited. But anyway, I had this big black bag that had all my blackout equipment in it in case of a power outage. Because that is the event that I'm most likely to incur. It had, it's got in it candles, lanterns, flashlights, butane, a butane stove, that sort of thing for when the lights go out. I started adding in containments uh, or items containing things regarding health, safety, and stuff like that. And these are things that I don't want to have just in a uh, trauma bag, because I do have my trauma bag that I keep in my truck all the time for injuries, medical type of situations. This is more for contagion, viruses, etc., pandemics. Pardon the bag. This is not going to be the bag that this stuff stays in forever. Although, I am kind of liking the Lego Ninja bag. This is an old bag that used to belong to my grandson that he used to keep his little cars in. And I got it at uh, Goodwill for $2. But it serves the purpose 
it is a little bit small so I do need to get a bigger bag that's in the works so let me show you what I've got in here uh, in my uh, I guess I'm gonna call it my contagion bag or my pandemic bag that sounds better anyway it's stuff to help me and my wife protect ourselves from some type of pandemic and the bag is very stuffed because it's a small bag so I'm just gonna take in no particular order what pops out okay and the first thing that pops out are masks now I have here just some safety works dust masks there are four in here these are just regular uh, around you know regular masks they do have the metal um, and they do go over the head let me take this hat off and they do have the metal here that you can bend to shape around your your nose and your face area but these are just regular dust masks they're not not the N95 uh, these are more or less for you know general similar to what you will get in a, a doctor's office but I do have here and I had to cut it in half I have eight of these um, 3M M95 respirator masks I have eight of them for my wife and I but because of the size constraints on this bag I had to take four out and I just put them on our medical cabinet but again these are a lot nicer these are made by 3M they have the two straps and they don't go over your ears they go over your over your head and again you've got the metal strap up here that you pinch to get a good seal you pull it down underneath to where it goes under the chin so that you get good coverage and the N95 is what is I would say the minimum that you would want to get for some type of pandemic of course they make N99s and 100s they're very hard to find right now if you go on Amazon and do a search to try to purchase M95 masks uh, I believe that they're all all the vendors are sold out. I was able to pick these up at Walmart, and uh, you can get two of them for six ninety seven. And uh, they have the little respirator patch on the front. So these are just regular dust masks. These are the M ninety five. As soon as I get a bigger bag. I'm going to be putting the other four in there so that my wife and I will have eight. The next thing I have in here is this little bag here that just has a syringe on the top and then five vials of saline. And that is in case I need we need to flush out our eyes or... Uh, if we get a cut or something on our arm or something like that, we can flush that out with this saline. Either with the little tubes. These little tubes break into each little section. Or if it's bigger, we could use the uh, syringe to do that as an eye wash if, if need be. Uh, the next thing I'm going to reach in here... Of course, we've got some Lysol disinfectant, which kills 99.9% uh, .9 of germs. Spraying things down with this stuff. It's relatively inexpensive. This is the Great Value brand, which is about half the price of the Lysol. But it's the same thing. 
So uh, having some uh, Lysol or antibacterial disinfectant spray is uh, a, a great thing to have. Now here I have a box of pow powder-free vinyl exam gloves. These are uh, 100 to the to the box. And of course, these are just the disposable gloves um, that you can protect your hands with. Uh, also, I have one, two, three, four pairs of multi-purpose household gloves. These are the gloves that come way up, not all the way to the elbow, but they come up to mid-arm. Uh, they're flexible. Uh, BPA free. They're very durable. A lot more durable than these exam gloves. And uh, they do come up higher. So uh, I got two in a pack. Two for me and two for my wife. Um, the next thing I have is an extra bottle of bleach. Of course we have bleach stored in our home. But, again, this is in a bag, so if something happens, we do have to get out and go. This bottle of bleach is already in there. One bottle of bleach will disinfect a lot of stuff, okay? Alright, let's see. Also, I have in here hand sanitizer, okay? It's very important to just uh, make sure that your hands stay sanitized. And, uh clean and just a, a little dab will do you reminds me of that Jimmy Buffett song brew cream a little dab will do ya yeah so just a little dab of this stuff will will kill germs and uh, when you're touching things and stuff like that I don't have to tell y'all the reasons behind all of this but this is uh Again, the off-brand Equate uh, brand name kills 99.99% of germs. And uh, it even has vitamin E in it. Also, reaching in the bag, I keep a couple of bars of soap as well. Uh, the last thing I've got in here, and this was a good deal. I got these on Amazon, and um, I looked at I looked at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and Walmart for goggles, and I saw a lot of those safety goggles and the painter goggles and everything, but they didn't seem to have a very good seal around them. So I did some research on uh, Amazon. And I came across this deal, which is a set of two for $11.67. And what they are, is they are actually, I believe, originally intended for paintball. But these are full goggles. And the great thing about them, I'm going to give you a, a close-up now. The great thing about them, let me come around so you can really see this is they have a great seal around there all the way around not only is it soft and comfortable but it creates an airtight seal all the way around your eyes which a lot of those other painting safety type goggles did not provide so it came for 1167 it came with two pair also it came with two and I don't know what you call these things but it came with two of them like this now, let me tell you why this is so important for me, okay? I have, as you all know, 
a trach. And on my trach, you'll see this little thing right here. This is a speaking valve. Inside that speaking valve, I'll take it off and I'll show you. I'll have to cover the tip with my finger when I talk to do this, but I want you to see. And I change these out. You are supposed to change them out daily, but I change them off probably every other day. I'm coming closer to show you. And I hope that the camera's picking this up. But this is part of my speaking valve, and you can see that there is a filter here. And that filter is equivalent to the N99 masks because I breathe mainly. I do get some air through my nose and my mouth, but mainly my breathing happens right here in my throat. So I have those filters that will work like actually a tad bit better than one of these masks. But sometimes these would be a good idea. So what I would probably do is I would probably still, of course, wear the N95 mask. Put that on. Make sure it's under the chin. Make sure that it's around the nose tight. I would probably put this on too. And then, I would probably wear the goggles as well. So now, as you can see, pretty well covered. I've got my trach. Well, I'd have to pull that over. There we go. I've got my trach covered with this baklava, whatever you call it. And it covers the mask as well. And then I have the mask. And then I have the goggles. So, that, in addition to the gloves, I think I'll be set. Now, I think while it's important for you to go out and get all of this stuff, it's also important for you to try out all of this stuff. When you get your goggles, I had to adjust the straps on these. So my wife and I tried them on last night to make sure that the straps were already adjusted so that we wouldn't have to do that really quick. She has the white ones and I have the black ones and they they both came with these as well and while none of us know exactly what's gonna happen in this type of situation should something like this occur I think that this movie probably hit it pretty close to right on the head you had people fending for themselves, doing things they normally wouldn't do. You had the gang elements. You had uh, old people who were not of good health that just couldn't do it. Um, anyway, it's not something that I'd panic about, but... I was a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout growing up, and so be prepared has always been part of me. And uh, that's what being a prepper is all about. And one thing I have said it before, and I'll say it again, in desperate times, desperate people will do desperate things. Don't be desperate. Be prepared. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, Keep it outdoors.